All right, let's get to Kirsten now in our audience who has a question for Shai. Hi, Kirsten, what would you like to ask him? My question's about my living room. It's a really long, narrow, awkward space with a really huge fireplace, stone fireplace, and high windows. And I'm wondering about layouts, something to watch TV, maybe a little desk area, mm -hmm. and just an area for the family to hang out. Right. That well, looks like a kitchen. It is a kitchen, so I want to show the kitchen first because okay. she's already done the kitchen. She's That's done a great beautiful. job. And I have to say, shout out to Kristen. She drove down here from Timmins. Yay! Yes, from Timmins. So, well done. Thanks for coming down for the show. If so you she, live outside of Ontario, that's far yes. from Toronto. <laughs> it's far. So thank you like for coming. Just somewhere. That's great. Um, okay, so yeah, so she did a beautiful job with her kitchen. And then, like she was saying, she she has the living room that needs to be done now. And this is not dissimilar from most homes, you know, really across the country. Yeah. There's broad loom, wall to wall broad loom, and you have kind of that big beautiful fireplace. And what can we do with it? So we did a little bit of a floor plan, and I think probably the biggest challenge that a lot of people have is that they think that it all needs to be condensed into one area, but we've split mm. into two areas for you. So you have almost like a little I like to call it our cognac sipping area over here. Oh, I like uh, that. In front of the fireplace. Yes, cognac and whatnot. Um, you did say you needed an area for a desk, so we put that actually across, and it's perfect space for it. It fills it up really nicely. Um, and then across the other side, we have your living area. So this is going to be where you're going to watch television, and the question then became, how do we balance the fireplace, which over here, and this wall over here, which is a big open space. So we've done an elevation for you as well. And we're going to keep that beautiful stone fireplace. I mean, that's really a nice focal point. And if we can use it instead of refacing it, I think that's going to be the way to go. So we kept that beautiful, it's almost like a, a almost big river rock. And it's absolutely stunning. Um, but the challenge was is that you had a very small niche to the left of it, and then you had a huge spance to the right of it. So we're going to uh, actually do built-ins, wall to the fireplace, and then fill that in as well on this side as well. It'll just be a beautiful balance, and, and you're good to go. Well, we know she's got good sense already she because this look, that looks absolutely gorgeous, the kitchen. Love it. So she good stuff. Well Mimi, I know you want to ask Scott something. You've got a question, a decor question. What would you like to ask? Uh, my house, I live in a semi-detached house. It's uh, 90 plus years old. Um, the exterior needs a lot of updating. So I was just asking um, some suggestions on color for the roof, the siding, the porch, the windows, the doors. Uh, just a couple. <laughs> anything just that would increase the things. curve appeal. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I was taking a look at the exterior shots here and there's a lot going on. Also, you're a semi-detached home, which means you should be considering also what your neighbors have done or planning on doing because you share uh, siding, you share a post, uh, you share shingles, things like that. Um, this is the front of your home and again I'm just noticing a lot of inconsistencies which is part of the the big uh, disconnect here so first of all you got a brown window up top and then you've got sort of a light beige one down at the bottom and a bit of a different color even for the door and I would say first of all those items should all be the same color your doors your windows you want some consistency there um, you've got the brass numbers and hardware and mailbox um, and some of them, again, are inconsistent, like the light fixture. I would replace the hardware, the light fixture, the numbers, uh, the doorbell, and the mailbox so that they're all consistent, maybe with like a brushed nickel, something a little more neutral that ties in. Um, the roof, I can see the shingles are peeling, so it's time to redo the roof. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest, based on what I'm seeing, that you probably head more into the gray tones than the beiges and the browns. Um, so if you did a, a lighter gray siding and took that right around the side of your house where we see the cedar shakes are starting to peel up, because you're going to have to replace those probably in the next five years. So do the siding all consistent all the way around. And then your choice is to either get a matching window or a contrast window. I prefer a contrast, so I would go with like a dark charcoal, uh, something that's going to be close to your um, roof material. And so if you went dark on the roof material, you could again that match that with a new railing. You're going to need a railing coming down. I just drew one in real quick, but you've got four steps there and no railing. So uh, there's a sort of a combination of things that are outdated, things that are uh, building code violations, and things that just have been neglected for a while. No, it's OK. I get it. You, you, you know, you put things off, and, and it's like everything is deteriorating at the same rate. Now's a great time to refresh everything from the garden and hiding some of the, the cleanouts and things in your garden to replacing the decks. Um, you are basically looking at three different colors here. Your roof, uh, your windows and doors, and then your railings and deck. And keeping them all in the gray to black tones is probably my best suggestion for you. Great, thank you. So many of us in the same boat, Mimi, don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it happens.